Hey there, once again, YouTube. How you guys doing today? I uh, just got back from Mount Rainier, took a good hike, got to see that nice andesitic to desitic stratovolcano. I also got to see Mount Adams from the trail, so it was a very nice hike. Finally got home. Right now it's 6.39 p.m. Pacific Time, August 15, 2019. A few things did occur while I was on my hike at Mount Rainier. Okay, so we had a magnitude 3.5 at 7.4 kilometers in depth. And then there was a foreshock. Uh, I'm going to say, pro I'm going to call this a foreshock because this was about, what, 10, 10 or 11 hours prior to the 3.5, somewhat near the same location. Magnitude 3.5 at Yellowstone struck right along the southern border of Yellowstone National Park, right down in this location right here. Let's turn on U.S. faults, shall we? Now we see the closest fault would be either the East Mount Sheridan Fault System or the smaller Buffalo Fork Fault. Now if we go to the U.S. Quaternary Faults from the USGS Fault Map right here, we do see the, right here, come on, the Buffalo Fork Fault. Now this page will show more faults than what the USGS Earthquake website shows. And the earthquake struck right in the middle somewhere, right in this location right here, not really on any faults right on the southern section of Yellowstone National Park, probably basically right on the border of the National Park. Very interesting earthquake. We'll take a look at that. Let's go here. It says somebody felt it. It said that there was a did you feel a report for this magnitude 3.5, but then you go here and there's zero reports. So I don't know. I don't know about that. Who knows? But this magnitude 3.5 that struck today, as you can see here, is the largest since July 18th, 2017, it's been more than two years since Yellowstone National Park saw a magnitude 3.5 or so. Very, or 3.5 or greater, I mean. So it has been a little while, a little over two years since we've seen an earthquake this size in Yellowstone National Park. It is interesting nonetheless. Let's go to origin just real quick, just to take a very fast look at it in the seismic program swarm. It says YHR in the WI, WI network, excuse me, is the closest seismic station. Let's take a look at that now just real quick. Here we are with seismic station YHR in the WI network, which was the closest seismic station to detect this earthquake right here. Now the earthquake 3.5 occurred at 1946 UTC. It took about six seconds or so to arrive on the closest seismic station, which I have up on Swarm on August 15, 2019. So that would be this one right here, 1946 UTC on the 15th. Very, 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 I have to say very a million times, very strange looking earthquake. This is unfiltered. It's a broadband station, so it shows uh, lower frequencies than what other stations show, or excuse me, channels. Let's do a one hertz high pass filter to the eighth power. Still looks extremely weird. Look at those dominant lower frequencies, guys. It's obviously not a low frequency earthquake. We see strengths going well beyond 25 hertz. But let's go here. You can tell the strongest energy is below 5 hertz, though. Of course, strength going well beyond that. But why would it have such strong lower frequencies, even though it's not a low frequency earthquake? I found that extremely odd. Let's add a 2 hertz high pass filter just real quick. It still looks kind of strange, guys. A very, very weird earthquake in a very weird location with a suspected foreshock prior to it just to the south just to the south-southeast, as you can see down here, about 10 or 11 hours prior. So, I think that's very interesting, guys. What do you think caused it? It's not occurring on any known fault system at all. It was at about 7.4 kilometers in depth, with the foreshock being a 2.0 and 8.9 kilometers in depth. So, let me know what you think about that. Also, just about five hours after the magnitude 3.5 in Yellowstone, Manhattan saw some more earthquakes, guys. Very interesting. Now, they thought that the other earthquakes after the 4.0 earlier this year were aftershocks. But we're continuing to see low to mid-range magnitude 4s in the same location near Manhattan, Montana. For today's magnitude 4.2, we saw a 2.44 shock and a 3.3 4 shock. We did see 4 shocks to this magnitude 4.2. Near Manhattan, Montana, once again, guys, another 4. What is going on up there? Here's the earthquake catalog, magnitude 3.5 since January 1st, 2000 for this area right here between Three Forks and Belgrade, which is where these earthquakes are occurring. Let's press search and see how the magnitudes have been increasing over time. 
Notice, since 2000, there really have been none except for earlier this year. There's a 3.7 in February. Then we had a magnitude 4.0, which was labeled significant. When it's labeled red, that means it's labeled significant by USGS for the certain area. Uh, yeah, that was in July, on July 14, 2019, and they're like, oh man, we had an earthquake, that's crazy. But then they continued to have more. 3.5, 3.5, 3.6 over the, uh, in August, early August, just a week or so ago, they said there were aftershocks. Okay, if these are aftershocks, how come we saw 4.1 on August 6th, and then 10 days later, just today, we saw 4.2 in this location? Is anybody starting to see a pattern here? Oh, whoops, my bad. I meant to press terrain. I am telling you right now, it is highly likely these are not aftershocks of the 4.0 down here, which USGS did say before. Now, that was before these uh, few more magnitude 4s popped off. Very, very intriguing. Let's go to US coordinary faults and see if there's any significant faults up here that can trigger magnitude 5 or magnitude 6, which is where I am thinking this is heading all the way up okay bozeman come on buddy <clears throat> Ooh. okay three forks belgrade we see a the central park fault which is very very it's actually pretty small and it is not well constrained at all so they don't even know exactly how big this fault is and exactly what it does. And that's occurring right between Three Forks and Belgrade. And we do see, whoops, these earthquakes occurring basically in that location. Not linear to the fault really, but basically in the same location. And now we have two magnitude 4s in the past 10 days that are higher than the original magnitude 4. And this is showing magnitude 3.5 and above since the year 2000. So something is definitely brewing up in this location. I'm not saying a larger earthquake is coming, but I do think it is in the forecast. I think we should expect one in the next year or two, maybe magnitude six, possibly, because aftershocks usually are not that much bigger than the main shock, which occurred in July 14th, 2019. So I think all of these are four shocks to a bigger event. You can tell they have been increasing just slightly. So let's take a look at today's event in the seismic program swarm from the closest seismic station. Today's event was a magnitude 4.2 at 9.7 kilometers in depth. 317 people reported feeling this event. It looks like a strike slip event. Kind of. I, I'm unsure. I'm unsure about that one. Let's go to origin. Phases. And arrival time. The closest seismic, seismic station, excuse me, is BOZ in the US network, broadband vertical. Zero zero location code. Let's take a look at that in the seismic program swarm right now. Here we have BOZ in the US network. Zero zero location code broadband vertical. I do not have a filter added yet. You see this event right here at 1947 UTC about a minute after the 3.5 in Yellowstone. Well, it'll take about a minute or two to arrive on this station. This is the magnitude 3.5 at Yellowstone. Look at those strong lower frequencies and those strong surface waves, guys. We got the P wave arrival. S-wave arrival and some Rayleigh or Love waves starting right about here or so. Very intriguing, guys. Very, very intriguing that the 3.5 was that strong. Again, the 3.5 in Yellowstone was the strongest to occur since 2017. A little over two years, guys. A little over two years since we've seen one that large at Yellowstone. Again, here it is with the 1 hertz high pass filter. Now we're going to go down here. We did see a force shock right here. There were multiple force shocks to this magnitude 4.2 today. And here's the magnitude 4.2 that over 300 people reported feeling, guys. Very strange S wave. Much stronger than the P wave. Very, very strong earthquake, guys, for 4.2. I'm going to say maybe it's a 4.3, but not that much bigger. And we do see multiple aftershocks occurring afterwards. And look at all those aftershocks, guys. Very small, probably in the magnitude 1 to magnitude 2 range. Again, with very strong S waves. More aftershocks, more aftershocks, more aftershocks. But this, these are not aftershocks from the 4.0 earlier this year. Which that's what USGS was originally saying. Is that the mid-range magnitude 3s and a lot of the 2s that were occurring after the 4.0 earlier this year were aftershocks. And I would agree with them. However, now we are seeing larger earthquakes than the 4.0 that occurred earlier this year. And we've seen 
a 4.1 and a 4.2 in just a in just a 10 day period. So what is brewing up here in Montana, guys? I think possibly a larger earthquake could be on the way. It wouldn't hurt to prepare if you are in Montana. Just, you know, have a have an emergency plan. I'm not saying anything for sure is going to happen, but it's always good to keep a lookout when magnitudes are increasing and seismicity is increasing in any given area where you live, guys. Always, always keep an eye out for that. I was keeping an eye out for that when the magnitude 4.6 struck Monroe. A lot of the aftershocks were starting to increase in magnitude, and then finally they died off. No major earthquake happened afterwards, so I think we're safe on that one here in Washington. But for Montana, that's eh, a different story. Don't know what's going on there, guys. So I thought that was very, very intriguing. So let's go back, see if anything else happened while I've been recording. Happens all the time. Go to world. Not much else, guys. Not much else. Let's zoom in to California. Aftershocks and swarming continues at the coastal volcanic field and the ridge area. Let's see. We did see a magnitude 1.5. Four at 21.8 kilometers in depth here in Washington along the Seattle fault line. Right in this location right here. Mount Rainier saw a magnitude 0.0, .0 at 4.8 kilometers in depth. I was not there when that happened. I wouldn't have felt it anyway. So, all right, guys. So that's pretty much it. Keep an eye out for Steamboat Geyser. The next eruption will match the all-time yearly record. And the eruption after that will beat the all-time yearly record. Hope you guys have a great day. God bless, and I will be back soon. See you later.